Hi guys, David Jennings here from podcastinterviews.com and excited today, I've lined up a fantastic interview with a copywriting legend. He's pretty much taught everyone who knows anything about copywriting who's big in the internet marketing space. He's uh, worked with Rich Seferin, Evan Pagan, Frank Kern, Mike Philsame, that's just to name a few and he's worked really closely as well with some of the Great, you know, some of those guys who started off in direct mail and sort of evolved. We're talking Jay Abraham and Gary Halbert. He's worked with them for years. Um, I think what I like most about uh, John Carlton, that's who we'll be talking with today, is he really earned his stripes writing copy back in the, the day for some of the big boys, so big companies. So it's not like he's just worked in the online space. He's done a whole host of things, and I'm, I'm sure we'll fall and, and dig into that sort of stuff. Um, in this, uh, I suppose when I first got introduced to John's stuff, it was quite a few years back, and I think the first time that I actually saw him speak live was at uh, Ed and Frank's seminar here in Melbourne, and that was a good number of years ago, and I think when you see someone in person, it, it really gives you an opportunity to... Uh, you, you just see their, their their material shine through, and I, that's what I saw with John. Like, he wasn't faking it. He lives and breathes this stuff. So just like to welcome you to the call, John. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, glad glad to be here. I'm glad. I'm sorry about making you get up so early in the morning. It's done, so. No, I'm getting, getting used to these early starts. I, I know we've only got a short time today, and so I'm going to dig straight into it. Um, no fluffing Excellent. about. Um, okay. The main thing, like your expertise obviously being in copywriting and um, I know you, I think one of your skills is interweaving storytelling into the way that you do copywriting and I'd be keen to get your thoughts on why you do that and, and how it actually works in the whole selling process. Okay. Um, Dave, the, 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 the main thing I kind of discovered – um, first of all, just to just to give people kind of a base um, uh, idea of where I came from, I am not a natural salesman, and I was a one of the original slackers in the world. I didn't get my act together till I was like thirty three years old. I was I was lost, uh, broke. I was literally sleeping on someone's couch and homeless. I'd lost my girlfriend, my job, and my place to live all within a two month period. And I I was a lost boy and just kind of made the decision that I better get busy making a place for myself in the world or I was going to be a bum the, the, the rest of my life. So so I didn't have an early start. I had no advantages. I did this all on my own because there were no courses back then. We're talking about the uh, 90, early 1980s, back when you guys were uh, uh, still gleams in your uh, parents' eyes. Um, and, and I was – and I, I had – you know, I had a lot of job experience because I kept getting fired from every job I had. So the entrepreneurial world uh, of becoming a freelance copywriter, working with a number of different clients, appealed to me on multiple levels, not the least of which was the fact that I couldn't work for anybody. I had a problem with authority. I didn't do well. Um, you know, wearing a, a tie and having to show up somewhere at 8 o'clock and work till 5. So I, I had an early start, and I've been doing this for a long time. As you mentioned, I've worked with many of the biggest clients out there. I've written uh, controls for some of the biggest mailers in the world. Uh, by mailer, I mean people who use direct mail, uh, which is still king, by the way, in, in, in most of the direct response world, although the online world is catching up quick. Um, so I, I bring an old-school sensibility here. And by old school, I mean that when I started figuring out how to make advertising work offline, and by the way, I wrote some of the first infomercials out there on TV, I've written for radio, I've written for everything. So when the web came around, I realized the web was just another vehicle for spreading a sales message to a wider audience. So I got online in a hurry as soon as I realized the potential there. And uh, uh, writing for the web is no different, essentially, than writing for anything else, for any other medium, uh, except for the advantages of technology. Um, uh, we can we can talk about that later if you want. But basically, being able to use video and being able to use uh, audio and animation and all kinds of things is is great, and it makes for a very vibrant multi. Uh, sensory experience when you're trying to get your sales message across to somebody. But the basic salesmanship 
hasn't changed since the first caveman traded up to a cave with a better view for a slab of mastodon beef. <laughs> um, this, you know, it, it, my big discovery early on was that the real secret to being able to sell stuff, not to get people excited about something, not to just start a conversation, not to uh, just become a, you know, a, a moderately good person at doing stuff. But to be able to sell, to be able to close the deal, to be able to get people so excited that, that they say, Hey, what you have, that's exactly what I want. You're the guy I want to deal with. And you know what? You're right. I'm going to buy this right now to get to that point required hanging out with some of these, what I call old school salesmen. And that's why I started getting really interested in this. And it's the, the, the stuff that worked long ago. And worked while you were growing up, worked pre-web, is working now on the web. And this is the kind of stuff where you begin a sales conversation uh, where you just start talking about things and and get people to understand, again, that what you have is really something that can change their life. I mean, uh, when we talk about you know products that change people's lives, if you're building a playhouse for your daughter out in the backyard and you're out of nails and you need nails – and I have you the nails you want, then your life has been put on hold on a very mild level. It's not, it's not a, you know, big, super life changing, but it has changed your life. You wanted to get the thing done. You can't get it done. You're stuck. I have the nails. If I, you know, it's my job to make you understand I have the nails. It's a good deal. Let's get that thing done. So, so you, you that's one level. Another level is if I have a dire health, emergency or problem and you have some answers about how to take care of it what to do all this stuff that's a very urgent problem that's very high on the trauma scale so the 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 conversation that that you have to have to let people know um what you know about what you offer whether it's a product a service uh, whether it's information, what, what, whatever it is, you have to begin a conversation that has the goal of, of establishing yourself as the person they want to deal with, as establishing that what you have will either fix the problem, that it's a solution, that it's what your prospect is looking for, and you got to be able to close the deal. You have to make them understand that you are the guy to deal with and they should do this now. Now, the best way to have this conversation, that's, I just went around the block to answer your mm-hmm. question here. Uh, we are naturally wired to listen to stories. Before writing was invented back in Sumeria, it, you, what, 5,000 years ago or something, where they stuck sticks into clay tablets and started creating alphabets. Before then, and even during the early days, the only way we had to communicate was by telling stories, to spread information, to keep the history of the tribe alive, to, to, to be able to tell Bob, who lives on the other side of the forest, something, you know, that you know and you'd like him to know and you've never met Bob, then the story that you tell is interesting. The guy, the, the, whoever's going to tell Bob the story remembers the story. He tells Bob. Bob gets the story down. Bob tells his kids. His kids tell his, their kids, et cetera, et cetera. So, our brain is actually wired for listening to stories. Now, that doesn't mean that any old story is going to work. And most of us in the modern age have lost our ability to tell stories. Uh, I was pretty lucky, Dave. I grew up in a storytelling family, and I was the youngest by 10 years. Um, and that meant that when I was little, I learned really quick that I was not going to hold the attention of the table about what happened in the sandbox that day. If I didn't get a hook going and start and tell a good story, because they would look at me and then interrupt and go off on their own stories. They didn't want to hear what a kid had to say. And that, that kind of stuck with me. And I've always been interested in storytelling. So when I got into the marketing side of life, when I became a, 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 a real entrepreneur, you know, the, the, and I learned that the best salesmen that, that I would, that that I would meet or read about or find out about all told stories. It all made perfect sense. So the storytelling, you, you, it needs to be, it needs to be short sizzling and stay within the pocket of your listener. This is not you telling a story. This is you being the conduit or the, um, you are the translator of the message. So the story you tell is not about you. It's about what's going on in the head of your prospect when you're trying to sell something. So the story you tell um, it can be, you know, it, it, when, when, now that you know this, 
and you start reading some some really good uh, stuff online, and you start seeing some some videos that are really good and hold your attention. Start thinking critically about that. Stop yourself. Still, go ahead and listen to it, but stop yourself and say, "Wait, why am I interested in what this guy's saying or writing? Why is this hooking me?" And when you start looking at it critically like that. In almost all cases, he will be weaving a tale for you. And it's like you're thinking, well, what happens next? Oh, okay. And, and he's taking you down a path, sort of. And, of course, if what he has is something I want, but I'm not quite ready to buy it, then that story involves all of the things that I need to hear in order for me to make an intelligent decision that, you know what, yeah, I do want this. I want it now, and he's the guy I want to get it from. Does that make sense, Dave? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. 